Greetings, Dr. Hatik here from Nysora.com. Now, let's talk about frantic sparing peripheral nerve blocks for analgesia after major shoulder surgery. Of course, interscaling brachial plexus block is clearly the king of analgesia after shoulder surgery. You can also use it for anesthesia as well as a complete anesthetic. Unfortunately, the ability of interscaling brachial plexus block to anesthetize the phrenic nerve and cause diaphragmatic paralysis knocks out about 20 to 25 percent of the lung function and therefore in patients who cannot tolerate this interscaling brachial plexus block is not an option so let's talk about one of the two blocks that we can do the first one is a suprascapular nerve block which we will talk in another occasion but today we're going to tackle the technique of axillary nerve block not axillary brachial plexus block but the axillary nerve block for analgesia after major shoulder surgery or any painful condition on the proximal humerus. So let's get started. Let's go to an Isaurus compendium of regional anesthesia. Axillary nerve block. So here we can see the position of the transducer for axillary nerve block. What you really want to do is place the transducer on the posterior lateral aspect of the shoulder. You would like to see the head of the humerus and scan down slightly distally until you just lose the head of the humerus. Let's see what that looks like. Now this is the ultrasound image that corresponds to that transducer position. Here you can see this is the posterior circumflex humeral artery and that is the axillary nerve. Very important to understand is that these structures are actually nested into the fascia layer and that fascia layer belongs to deltoid muscle and teres minor muscle. These two muscles invest fascia that splits to encompass the axillary nerve and it's accompanying the artery. So anywhere within this spatial compartment between the two fascia you inject is adequate to get axillary nerve block to work. As we now continue to scroll down the compendium, we can see that the needle insertion usually occurs in plane. Of course, you can use out of plane insertion as well, but in plane gives you a greater degree of control over the injection process. And now we're going to switch to the Nysaurus fabled reverse ultrasound anatomy animation and the illustration. Here we can see that's the fascia layer that we talked about. You can see how the nerve, the axillary nerve and the artery are encompassed in that fascia layer and all you want to really do is place the needle inside the fascia layer and inject local anesthetic in order to push the axillary nerve. You see injection into the fascial compartment away from the nerve and observing the nerve being pushed implies the success of the block technique as well as the safety because you're not injecting around the nerve but rather into the fascial space compartment that contains the nerve. This is extremely important. So let's review this one more time. Transducer position is on the posterior lateral aspect of the humerus. This is the image that we're trying to get, which is the image of the axillary nerve and the artery that accompanies it. And the fascial sheet is shared between the deltoid muscle and teres minor muscle. And then what we want to do is insert a needle in plane usually to put the needle tip right next to the axillary nerve but inside the fascial compartment and inject a few milliliters of local anesthetic to displace the axillary nerve. And that was the axillary nerve block as one component of the phrenic sparing blocks for analgesia of the shoulder after major shoulder surgery. Be sure to visit the Compendium of Regional Anesthesia, give it a one week free trial and read everything about nerve blocks of the shoulder and regional anesthesia at large. It's one of the best resources on the planet. Until next time.